a pleasure for me to introduce Dr. Napura Bakshi. She's a cataract surgeon and a retinal specialist and does research on retina diseases. She's a staff clinician at Mount Sinai Hospital and St. Michael's Hospital and performs cataract surgery both at St. Mike's and the Kensington Eye Institute. She lectures at the University of Toronto and she's won many teaching awards for her training of medical students. So here to help us understand more, about the uh, age-related macular degeneration, the risk factors, and how to preserve your remaining vision. Dr. Nupura Bakshi. Thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. I recognize uh, several of you as my patients, and, and hello to the others that I haven't met before. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about your risk factors for macular degeneration, and as well, what can you do to help prevent your macular degeneration from getting worse? Or for those of you who may be family members of those with macular degeneration, what can you do to help prevent yourself from getting it at all? I have many patients who have macular degeneration, and I think the questions that I get asked most often, first, it's that look of shock when you tell them in the beginning what, what you know what's going on. Then patients ask, why did this, did this happen to me? Did I do something wrong? Is this my fault? Why did this happen? And I think another question people ask is, you know, can I do anything about it? Am I going to go blind and I can't even stop it? What can I do to help prevent uh, things from getting worse and maintain my vision as long as possible? And I think the other question people, people often ask is, what does this mean for my family? What does this mean for my children? And I hope with the talk today that you'll get a better answer to some of these questions because uh, I'm going to assume that many of you may have the same questions yourself or may have had gone through this process of, of realizing that you have this condition and asking yourself these questions. So as Dr. Schwartz had said, macular degeneration is multifactorial. We don't know why somebody gets it. Why does, you know, the person sitting, one person sitting in the waiting room have it and the person next to them does it. We know that there are certain risk factors, but we don't, we can't pinpoint a formula for why somebody gets it and somebody doesn't. The risk factors for macular degeneration can be modifiable or non-modifiable. This means some of the risk factors you can't do anything about, like your genes or, you know, what genes your parents give you, or there are factors that you can do something about, like whether you smoke or not. So in terms of the risk factors that are not modifiable, as we talked about, the typical uh, stereotypical patient with macular degeneration is a Caucasian older female with light blue eyes. So uh, sex is certainly a risk factor. Whether you're a female, it's much more common in women than men. Age, of course, that's why it's called age-related macular degeneration. If we could stop age, we'd, you know, we'd be able to fix a lot of cure, uh, cure a lot of problems in the world. But we can't do anything about that. It's certainly more common in those who are older, and it's very rare under the age of 60. Uh, also, your eye color, it's more common in people who are blue eyes, and as well, your family history. We certainly do know that many cases of macular degeneration run in families. There's no single one gene that's been identified. It's not like some other diseases where everybody in the family has a particular mutation and then everybody gets the disease. It's not like that. We know there are many genes involved. We don't know. There are several other genes we haven't even discovered yet. We just know that it has a tendency to run in families, so we haven't fully understood the mechanism for why that is. But what's really important to know then is that if you have a diagnosis of macular de degeneration, it's really important you let your family members know so that they know to get screened at a young age. So people who have a parent or a grandparent with macular degeneration should certainly be having annual like, eye exams by the time they're 40 or 50 years old so that it can be detected early on and they can take measures to help prevent the disease from getting worse. So in terms of the modifiable risk factors, and these are the ones that you have some control over, they have to do with this term oxidative stress that Dr. Schwartz was alluding to. And oxidative, uh, oxidative stress is essentially when uh, 
due to exposure environment and oxygen, you develop these what are called reactive oxygen species or free radicals in your body. And you can kind of think of them as little molecules that are little warriors in, in your body, but they're attacking your body. And they're little variants of different molecules and they cause a lot of problems from aging and wrinkles uh, through to more severe problems like heart disease and eye disease. And we don't fully understand how they do what they do or why they do it. But a lot of the things that we know help prevent macular degeneration from getting worse have to do with blocking these free radicals or oxidative stress molecules. And one of the things that helps to increase oxidative stress is smoking. So I know that every doctor you've ever seen in your life, if you smoke, has told you, please stop smoking. I don't know any doctor that won't, that'll say, go ahead and smoke. They will all say, stop smoking. So it's not only good for your heart and your lungs, but it's also good for your eyes. And certainly patients who smoke have a much higher rate of developing macular degeneration. And if you've quit, that's wonderful. It, your risk is still higher than the average population, but it's still better than somebody who still smokes. Also, UV protection. We know that UV light and sunlight increases oxidative stress. And the layer of cells that's the kind of the natural sunblock in the eye is called the retinal pigment epithelium. And it's a layer of cells underneath the retina that contains a pigment that, that absorbs light. It's similar to the pigment in your skin, which is why people who are Caucasian are more likely to get sunburnt than, say, somebody like myself, who's of darker pigmentation. So we know that the UV light can damage these uh, retinal pigment epithelium cells. And patients who have more exposure to UV light uh, from a younger age are more likely to develop macular degeneration. So it's really important to wear sunglasses when you go outside, uh, to wear a wide brim hat perhaps to avoid the sun coming into your eyes. And you want to make sure that your sunglasses are good ones that have a good UV filter. If you, you know, if you get, sometimes if you get the sunglasses from the dollar store or something like that, they may not have a good UV protection inside them. Also, diet is really, really important, and that's something that we can control on a daily basis. A meat and potatoes diet is the opposite of what you want. If you have macular degeneration, you want to have a Mediterranean-style diet. So you want to pretend like you're living in Italy or somewhere along the Mediterranean coast and have a diet that's really good in green leafy vegetables and not so much, you know, romaine lettuce. We're talking like dark green leafy vegetables, kale, collard greens, spinach, and as well, a lot of colorful fruits and vegetables, peppers, um, you know, uh, melons, everything that, anything that's bright that would, you know, that catches your eye when you walk into the grocery store, those bright colorful vegetables, the green leafy vegetables, those are the ones that contain the antioxidants. So the antioxidants combat those free radicals, those reactive oxygen species, and help to reduce oxidative stress. They also contain pigments similar to the pigments that are in the eye and, and are therefore also protective. And we'll talk about those in a little more detail. And and studies actually show that patients who have this type of Mediterranean diet have lower rates of developing macular degeneration. There are fewer patients in those parts of the world that have macular degeneration, and also the rate of it getting worse, the rate of progression is reduced. So diet is a really powerful tool, and you can all start that when you go home tonight for dinner uh, and, and help to prevent your macular degeneration from getting worse. So, now, what are the things that you can do? So essentially, most of the things that patients can do to preserve their vision have to do with these risk factors. Uh, you know, you're stuck with your age and your dender and everything else, but you can really help with regards to smoking, sunglasses, and diet. So UV protection, as I mentioned before, is really important, as well as uh, stopping smoking and um, and every doctor will continue to tell you that at every visit. I say that to my patients every time they come in. And it's not easy. I mean, I've never smoked, so it's easy for me to say, go stop smoking. But I know that it's not an easy thing to do, but it certainly does help with your eyes. A healthy diet is not only good for your eyes, it's good for your heart and your lungs, one that's very, you know, full of colorful uh, leafy vegetables and colorful fruits and vegetables. Also, make sure you see your eye doctor regularly. Don't miss your, you know, whether they're every month visits or every year visits. It's really important to go in. In the early stages, the signs of macular de degeneration can be 
none. You may be totally asymptomatic. You might have some little drusen spots in the back of your eye or some of these aging changes in the back of the eye and not even know it. It might have been de detected on a routine exam, but it's really important to go in for your annual eye exams at least to be screened. And if you have a diagnosis, it's important to go in and be screened so that we can tell if things are getting worse or not. And also, the AMSLR grid is very helpful. Uh, you saw it all in your packages. So whether you're using the little AMSLR grid or you're just using your blinds or you know your window screen or whatever it is, at least once a week, you need to make sure that you're checking your eyes one eye at a time to make sure that your macular degeneration is not getting worse. I have so many patients who knew they had macular degeneration and come in one day with a big bleed in one eye. And as Dr. Schwartz said, the other eye will adapt, and they didn't even know anything was wrong. But a lot of times these are patients who forget to do the testing. So stick, you stick that grid, if you're not using your blind, stick the grid on your refrigerator so you see it when you get a snack. Stick it on your mirror so you see it when you look at your face to put your makeup on in the morning. Put it somewhere where you're going to see it so you know to test and do it one eye at a time because you don't want to get to the point where you have a severe wet macular degeneration and then have to backtrack to try and get things better. You know, they say an, you know, an, a pound of, an an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and certainly that is the same for macular degeneration. So the other thing is uh, taking your AREDS vitamin, the age-related eye disease study. How many of you are on a vitamin for your eyes? You can, we can get a show of hands, so a lot of you. And how many of, of you knew about the new study that came out a few months ago about the eye vitamins that could uh, you know, affect which type of vitamin you're on? Far fewer of you, so some of you. So especially if, you, if you're somebody who's going into your eye doctor maybe every six months or every year, you may not have heard about these new results. So I'll just review the older study and then the newer study because it really does make a difference in terms of the type of vitamin you're taking. So several years ago, uh, researchers primarily in the US wanted to try and replicate the components of a healthy diet and found it that a, a particular multivitamin that contained vitamin A as beta carotene, vitamin C, E, copper, and zinc was found to help prevent the progression of macular degeneration to the severe kind by 25% over five years. And this really was only found to be helpful in patients who had a medium degree of AMD. So if you had very, very mild AMD, or you had no AMD, or you had very, very severe AMD in both eyes, the vitamin wasn't helpful. So it was really helpful for the patients in the middle category, the ones that were at risk of getting worse. So everyone was told to take this vitamin, and that was, you know, we still are telling people to take the vitamin if you have this medium category of AMD. And this is something your doctor is going to tell you. It's not like you can look in the mirror and say, oh, do I have medium AMD or not? Um, except we told people who were smokers to not take the vitamin with beta carotene. So they came up with a special smokers formulation so that uh, patients who are smoking didn't have to take the beta carotene. That's because it was found to increase the rate of lung cancer. So there may be some of you who are either smokers or former smokers who are taking a special type of the vitamin. So the researchers wanted to go on and kind of revise and, and refine the formulation and, and based on newer literature, try and figure out what was the best combination of all these vitamins. So what they did is they added omega-3s. So this is the results of the new study that just came out in May. Um, and they added omega-3s because we know that having a diet that's high in fish, like a Mediterranean diet, was found to be protective. And they actually found that adding vitamin omega-3 as a supplement didn't make a huge difference. This was a bit surprising. We, didn't, we don't fully understand why the results showed that. We still do recommend that people eat a lot of fish or uh, you know, try and access to omega-3s, whether it's flaxseed or algae oil or, or fish through their diet. But we found that adding it as a supplement didn't make a difference. The other thing they did in the study was adjust the dose of zinc. And they did a high dose and a low dose, and that didn't really make a difference either. But the main thing that's important for you is that they replaced the vitamin A or the beta carotene with lutein and zeaxanthine. And lutein and zeaxanthine are molecules that are called carotenoids. And these are similar to uh, pigments that are in the back of your eye. And essentially, what they found is that the patients who had the lutein did better than the patients who had the beta carotene. They actually had an 18% redu reduction in their risk of macular degeneration relative to those who were on beta carotene. 
Also, they found that the patients who had beta carotene, even if they had stopped smoking several years ago, still had an increased risk of lung cancer, even if they had stopped smoking. So now, based on these results of the, uh, you know, the new study results, we tell all patients that you should be on the vitamin that does not have beta carotene and has lutein. So when you go home, you should check your pill bottles and make sure that you're on the one that does not have beta carotene but has lutein. Now, this perfect vitamin is still being developed by all the companies because the results came out in May and all the companies are scrambling to come up with the perfect product that matches the results of the study. But in the meanwhile, you should make sure and check your pill bottles and make sure that there's no beta carotene or vitamin A and you have a supplement that has lutein. So um, essentially, in summary, there are many, many risk factors for AMD. Some of those are ones that you're stuck with and you can't do anything about. And, but others are ones that you certainly ha can play a role uh, in helping reduce your risk for macular degeneration as well as reducing your risk for developing AMD. So, you know, and hopefully as more and more studies come along, we'll know more about other risk factors and what can be done. But, you know, the future does really look promising in terms of helping people to preserve their vision as long as possible. Thank you.